Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service here at Heritage Baptist Church. Stand with me and sing the Banner of the Cross. service of the word of prayer please dear heavenly father thank you for letting us for allowing us here to give you praise and song as well as in prayer let us learn more from thy word tonight and apply it to our daily lives be with all those that are sick and afflicted and be with our missionaries this we pray through christ's name amen amen you may be seated Well, it's good to see you here this evening. Good. We've got a, all kinds of different weather the last week, and then had we? We got hot, we got hotter, we got cold, we got rain, we got storms. That's pretty good coming in. Good to have you here with us. Somebody told me a couple of weeks ago, don't date your sermons. Don't let people know what date it is, and that way they can watch it. But if you don't have on a St. Patrick's Day tie, you're, you're in trouble here today, okay? And so we're glad that you're with us. And good to see some of you got in on that. You guys know, uh, don't you, that uh, St. Patrick was, I don't know if he ever claimed to have anything to do with snakes or not, but uh, they've pretty much adapted him. He would have probably been surprised to be called St. Anything. So you should do a little study about the man and what he was. He was a great preacher and won a good portion of Ireland to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that, that makes a big difference. Appreciate that. We're glad that you're with us. Remember, we got some things going on. Most of us are out on spring break around here, and some are out last week, and some are going to be out. And most, hardly anybody's out next week in this area. But we're glad to have you with us. Remember that March the 27th is Easter, right? No, no. When's Easter? April 4th. I just wanted you to get. I want you to check it out always. And so, all right. But it. You know what that means? That means coming up in just about three weeks, it's going to be Easter. So get ready for that. We're, we're going to have Easter egg hunt for the kids here. Uh, and also, we'd, if you would like, you can you say, preacher, what do we do this year? We're, they're going to do something different. They're going to try a whole Easter without any boiled eggs. Okay. And if you don't know this or not, Jesus and the 
bunny rabbit and a chicken and an egg and have nothing in common with each other, okay? And, and we're going to try to get that across, I guess. But if you don't know that already, you don't know very much about your Bible anyhow. So we'll just figure it out as we go. But we are glad to have you. There's only a couple of times in the scripture that the egg's mentioned. And one time it's mentioned, it says you can't hardly eat the thing without, without salt. And just to be obstinate, I eat all of mine without salt. Do you know the Bible says that? Y'all don't, huh? Okay, look it up when you get home. Get your cord and cordons out, look up egg and salt together. So we're glad to have you with us tonight. It's always good to have great things. We had our missionary come by and pick up a van that we got for him this week. And he's, he's, he's excited about being able to have that. He's excited about being able to work that's going on the Navajo Reservation. And he said, you know, the main thing he wants you to pray about is to be able to get opened up enough that they can get back on the reservation. Right now, they're having to come off the reservation for him to reach them. That makes it a little bit harder. And to be able to get their water and their building finished and uh, into the building, there's a, that's a long ways to go. So with all that said, I know you're going to pray and you're praying about our missionaries and we're our missionary of the month, of course, just one couple more weeks for the Edwards. And I know you're remembering him and your prayers. We got folks in our church that are in the hospital and doing and suffering and going through things. And and uh, so far, if I know, none of it's COVID, just regular old stuff. But ask for your grace in their lifetimes and pray for our country. Always pray for our country. I don't I don't know about you, but I think it would be a good thing every day to pray for your president and everybody that's in charge up there. And so I, you want know to be good. What we need is like a St. Patrick to move into Washington, D.C. and start preaching. What do you think? You think he'd start a revival preaching on the street? Am I, am I surprised you, man? Maybe we could pray for one. We're going to ask Brother Bill to come. And however the Lord leads him, he's going to lead us in a word of prayer. And ask God's blessing on just all those things, our offerings that were taken. And... Um, we're we're very fortunate. We're going to try to do something this year that we've never been able to do. And we're going to try to raise our all of the about 90 missionaries that we have up to the same level. And so if you give this year, that's part of what yours will go to. And that'll be a blessing. Brother Bill. Let's pray. Uh, God and our Father, we do thank you, Lord, for being able to come before you with our prayers, Lord, and our, our petitions. Lord, I do pray for the missionaries that were mentioned tonight, Lord, for the uh, gentleman that uh, picked up the van, Lord. Uh, it sounds like it was uh, a successful trip without any problems, and we thank you for that. May their uh, work be blessed, Lord, and, and the, the van continue to run well for them and, and be yeah. a great service to them. And Lord, if they would be able to get back on the reservation, Lord, and be able to do the work there uh lord i just pray lord for uh the edwards again this, this tonight lord we just uh think of them as our missionaries of the month lord help them as they're serving lord and are, are, are endeavoring to do what you would have them to do lord help them to keep encouraged lord i do pray for our country lord i ask that your our blessing for our leaders lord and wisdom uh, yeah. lord and uh, Lord, for Christians to to be bold about the uh, uh, in all times to, to be able to spread the gospel, Lord, and uh, not regard it as something or someone that doesn't need to hear it. And uh, Lord, give us that that ability to do that. Thank you, Lord, for these that came out tonight, Lord. Bless those who are listening online. Uh, bless their gifts as they give, Lord. And continue to support this uh, this ministry, Lord. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Brother Mike. Well, good evening. Thank y'all for coming. And uh, I know, yeah, like preacher said, for those of you who are watching next week, sorry, it's St. Patrick's Day today, so have to be. Uh, uh, timely in that matter a little bit, but, uh, uh, you know, you know how to tell if an Irishman is having a good time, right? He's doubling over in laughter. Uh, well, okay. And, 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 and what do you get if you cross poison ivy with four-leaf clover? You get a rash of good luck. 
So anyway, that's enough of that. I was I, I thought preacher was going to tell the whole story of St. Patrick, which is the beginning part of. Uh, I'm really not preaching about St. Patrick, but since it was it, it's St. Patrick's Day, I thought I'd tell you the real story. Uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day now is being celebrated with you know people wearing green and and uh, drinking green liquid and wearing shirts that say kiss me i'm irish although today i saw one that said, it was kiss me was scratched out it said wave from six feet away i'm irish <laughs> so that's appropriate for this year but uh Amen. you know that kind of uh regression of what the holiday is uh, you know it, it's kind of a big regression from what it was in uh, ireland saint patrick uh was actually not irish he was uh born to a uh a wealthy family in uh, the British coast. And his father was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest. And uh, he, he, he grew up in such a strict uh, religious home that he really kind of shunned God at an early age and, 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 and considered himself atheist by the time he was a teenager. Uh, but uh, at age 16, some uh, Irish marauders came through the British coast and took him captive, took him back to Ireland, took him to Ireland and made him a slave, sold him uh, to be a slave to a uh, a Druid chieftain there in Ireland. And at the time, Ireland was uh, pretty much ruled by, you know, paganism and, and Druids and, and they worshiped all kinds of gods there, not the real God. But, uh, and, you know, so he was made to work the pigs there in Ireland, and uh, during that time, as a slave, he says his faith grew, and he prayed daily. Uh, he found Christ, and was uh, he found that Christ was protecting him in his time of despair, and in his confessions wrote, I was 16 and knew not the true God, but in a strange land, and the Lord opened my unbelieving eyes, and I was converted. Six years into his slavery, he escaped, found his way to the coast, got on a ship, got back home to England, where he decided he was called to the ministry. Uh, all that time, never, ever wanting to go back to Ireland, but God spoke to him and said, you need to go back to Ireland. So he used his own money, bought a ship, went back to Ireland and started preaching and, uh, and speaking against slavery and all the things. And, and so he is... Basically, they, they claim he is responsible for bringing Christianity to Ireland and uh, converted lots and lots of people. Uh, but, you know, that was and he died on this day. That's why they celebrated. It was kind of a religious holiday there. But, uh, uh, you know, and one of the things that he did, and I'm going to show you this. I taught this to the kids last year. One of the things that made him pretty popular was he tried to explain the uh, God, God, Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, all being one. And, and he used the clover and said it's three leaves, but it's one plant. And, and it used that because clover was everywhere in Ireland. And that's why we see a lot of the clover uh, associated with it. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that's what he, they, they claim that he was preaching with the clover and led a lot of people to the Lord. But uh <clears throat> Uh, as far as the snakes go, they said there were no snakes in Ireland, so he, he didn't chase any snakes out. But they said maybe the snakes they were talking about were all the demons of, of the Druids and, and all of that. But so anyway, uh, he, he taught that. But funny story uh, before I begin, St. Patrick uh, wasn't a saint then. He was just Patrick, uh, and he was baptizing one of the kings. And he accidentally stabbed the king in the foot with his walking stick. He had a sharp sharp point on it. He stabbed the king in the foot and kind of leaned on the, the, the deal. And uh, he looks over and finally he looks down and sees the, the, the king's foot is all bloody. And he said, why didn't you say something? And the king said, I thought that was part of the ritual. So uh, he thought that was part of his baptism. So he got a little extra out of his. Uh, anyway, uh, so I want to preach tonight about green pastures since today's all about green. Uh, you know, on St. Patrick's Day and everyone is thinking and wearing green. Uh, it really has nothing to do with St. Patrick, but uh, I thought I'd give you the Paul Harvey version of who St. Patrick was. So uh, 
I started actually working on this sermon. Uh, I thought I was going to preach this one at, at New Year's because I was looking for greener pastures in 2021. Not sure if we've got that, but we're, <laughs> maybe by the end we'll be better off than we were. But uh, God changed my sermon in, in New Year's, and then I, he, he said it was okay to preach it this time. So uh, he didn't change the story this time, although it, it changed a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so green pastures, uh, obviously that leads us to uh, Psalms 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time to come to your house. Lord, I pray that your uh, word would come through me. Lord, that uh, we would learn something that we could keep in our heart. Uh, Lord, we just praise you that you are that shepherd. And we thank you for that shepherding that you give us throughout our, our life. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Psalms 23 is pretty much the, you know, probably the most popular verse. Even non-Christians know the verse. You know, most Christians, if you said what's the most popular verse, we'll say John 3.16. But Psalms uh, 23 is pretty much known all over the place. Uh, and, and we're just going to break it down a little bit, verse by verse, and talk about what David was, what, what picture David was putting out there. Uh, so the, <clears throat> Psalms 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Bible refers to God as the shepherd many times. In John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And it, then in uh, Hebrews 13, 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, and again, in First Peter 5, 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So there's a lot of uh, symbolism to that shepherd. And, and Jesus even used that, that, uh, that deal. But David here was, was writing something that he was very familiar with. Uh, you know, he was a shepherd when he was a small boy. And, uh, you know, this picture of God as the shepherd and us as the sheep is very illustrative description of our relationship with God. Uh, sheep are completely dependent on their shepherd for provisions, guidance and protection. Uh, you know, we, we you're probably familiar with several of the sheep verses, too. Right. Is, uh, Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Right. And. and that is the picture of how we are. And, and uh, sheep, uh, the sheep not following the shepherd, we've all gone astray. So I want to compare a little bit. And I actually, most of this is from uh, uh, Charles Stanley, not Stanley, I'm sorry, uh, Swindoll, Chuck Swindoll. Uh, and he, he kind of makes this comparison between the sheep and the believer. So uh, he says, uh, sheep lack direction. Unlike cats and dogs, sheep, uh, you know, get lost easily, even in the familiar environment of their own territory. So it is with the believers that uh, we cannot guide ourselves. We must rely completely on the word of God and the voice of our shepherd, Savior. And John 10, 27, you know, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I, and I know them, and they follow me. Uh, <clears throat> so in this, he says sheep are virtually defenseless. Uh, most animals have some effective means of defense, either sharp claws, teeth, speed. Uh, uh, you know, they've got a, a keen sense of sight, smell, or, or hearing to help them defend themselves or to get away from predators. Uh, you know, 
But sheep are awkward and weak and ignorant, and the only protection is the ever watchful eye of their shepherd. And so it is with the believer who is admonished to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because our, we don't draw on our own strength. We're weak, like the sheep. And uh, he, he, he reminds us there in Ephesians to, to be strong in the Lord. Sheep are easily frightened, uh, being ignorant and uh, un, unimpressive in stature and very much aware of their weakness. Sheep find comfort only in their shepherd's presence. And uh, believers are fearful as well. Uh, Otherwise, the Bible would tell us so many times to fear not, right? Uh, so many times it tells us over and over. Uh, uh, Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Sheep, I didn't know. I, I, I dealt with some sheep when I was in uh, high school. I took one year of ag. Very, I didn't want to be an ag, but that's all guys in my school could take because, you know, they put the girls in the home ec and the guys in ag. And so I was out in ag and I was proud as lost as an Easter egg out there because I couldn't, I couldn't weld. I couldn't, I, and I just, you know, I wasn't, I did, couldn't do any of it. But the, we had some of the guys raised sheep and they brought the sheep up there. And I thought, man, these, I, these sheep really are pretty dumb because they had, we had the rack that we would shear them in. And there was a little deal that that, that little barb of uh, of rebar sticking out there, so they wouldn't push too far forward. But that's all they would do is push their neck right onto that. I'm like, what are you doing? They're trying to get away. Instead of backing out, they would push forward into that deal. It was I, I couldn't understand, but they but this I didn't know. Sheep are by nature unclean. They're very unclean, unlike other animals that lick themselves or scrape or roll in the grass to cleanse themselves sheep are not like that sheep don't do that they will remain filthy indefinitely unless the shepherd cleanses them uh which all, all of a sudden uh, you're getting a picture of a believer right now right because we too would, would waller in the sin and if it wasn't for christ who would clean us right uh, by nature we're unclean and filthy and apart from a tender shepherd's cleansing we would remain perpetually dirty first john 1, 8, 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So uh, great verses. And the last one is uh, sheep cannot find food or water on their own. Well, most animals have that sense of smell. Uh, sheep depend on their shepherd solely to lead them to their food, uh, you know, if left to themselves, they would eat the poisonous weeds. And uh, once one of them eats the poisonous weed, all the others just follow it and do the same thing. And they'll die from eating the poisonous weeds. So the, the shepherd has to guide them to the places where that's not and keep them out of that and, and guide them to the, the green grass, which leads us to the psalm, the second verse. And he maketh me lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside still waters. You know, one day, I, I was not too long ago when I was reading this, and I was like, he maketh me lie down. And was, that sounds very forceful. And I thought, that's it's a strange, you know, it's not like he takes us to lay down in the green grass. No, he, he makes you lie down in the green grass. And I thought, that seems strange to me. But I, I was looking around and doing some research on sheep and shepherds, and, and lo and behold, there is a video on YouTube that says how to make a sheep lie down in green pastures. And I thought, okay. So I clicked on it and I'm watching and the guy takes one of his sheep and he literally grabs the sheep and kind of sits down with it, kind of up with its four legs like this, sitting on its behind on the ground and forcefully makes it kind of lay down there so that he can check it over for all of the, you know, any scrapes on its faces or any, any, any problems with its skin or, anything and this one they said had a problem with it's it was starting to get bigger and bigger his belly was was really pooching out and they had to set it down like that and 
put baking soda solution down until it cleared out its insides for him. He said he hated us for it, but uh, he said there was two ways to make them lie down. That was the one way, looked very forceful. The other was to make sure that they have enough food, water, and protection. And then they just go lay down and they're comfortable. And that's what David's kind of trying to tell us here that he maketh us to lie down because he's provided everything for us. And once we're provided for with that food, water, and protection, we're comfortable enough to ease and lay down. And because they're very skittish, any little thing, a snap of a twig or whatever, will make them scared and, and frightened. Uh, so, you know, uh, so as children of God, we're equally dependent, you know, having established the theme of the, the sheep and shepherd here, David uh, captures the psalm uh, in verse two with that, uh, with that all in there. But I've always, you know, <clears throat> I lost my place. But uh, yeah, so we can picture ourselves now. Uh, uh, the third verse here is is where we get to. Well, in this, I'm sorry. Here in the second verse, we're talking about the green pasture, pastures. And whenever I say green pastures, most of you probably picture this, right? That that looks like a great green pasture. It's full of the sheep. We we've all seen the knee high alfalfa, where the you know. That's what we think of when we get the green pastures. But in Israel, this, if I can get it to play, let me tap on it here. This is the green pastures they're talking about. I don't see any green. You have to look really hard to find green. There's a little bit up towards the top of the mountain. But that is the green pastures that David took his sheep to. It's nothing like what we think, right? And the reason that they have to lead them up those mountains is because up the top is where the green is. Uh, and those mountains get uh, get their green, their, their grass from, I mean, this is really desert. If we look in the Bible, it talks about the desert and uh, uh, going out into the desert the wilderness, but this is what they're talking about. This is right outside of, of uh, uh, Jerusalem and, and Jericho in that area and the hills around there. But what happens is at night, when the wind blows in off the, the sea, it brings moisture onto that one side of the hill. And the moisture condensates on the rocks and will drip down right off the rocks. And you'll find this right here just one little shoot of grass that pops up around the rocks where it has, has condensated enough to water the grass. So in this picture type, the shepherd's leading them one mouthful at a time around the mountain uh, and, and taking them, and, and I'll show you in a minute so the, some of the paths when we get to uh, the next verse, but this is the grass that springs up right there, you know, and so it's up to the shepherd to lead his sheep to the grass and they get a single bite every time and they keep going. And, and that's how it is with our shepherd. He will give us what we need right now. Ten minutes from now, we have to trust in him to supply them. And we tend to want all of it at once and we don't get that. If we had that if we had that other pasture, wouldn't really be a need for a shepherd, right? They could just let us loose and we could eat till our heart's content and lay down. But in this sense, you have to have a shepherd to lead you to the grass. Uh, you know, uh, so one, one mouthful at a time, just like that, reminds us of how we are with God. We have to trust him every minute of every hour of every day, right? And if we had that big green pasture, we wouldn't need that. But uh, uh, we sing the song, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you every hour. I need you. That's what they're talking about. We, we continually need Christ to continually lead us in, in, in the food and water and, and protection in our spiritual life. Now, you know, he doesn't give us all that I want, but little by little, 
you know, in my, uh, uh, I find it interesting that how many times a verse has popped up either in my daily reading or the verse of the day or somebody's posted it on Facebook that is, comes just when I need it. It's that verse that you just needed to hear that you hadn't really thought about, but you needed to hear it. And it pops up at the right time. That's, that's him feeding you that little bit every time. And it pops up when you need it, not all at once. We have the whole Bible. We don't eat the whole thing, right? We eat it one verse at a time. And uh, uh, Psalms 23, 3, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, the, the videos that I watched talked about these paths and how the word, the Hebrew word for paths of righteousness actually meant uh, paths of circles, walk in circles. And so what they do is they walk in circles around the mountain. So here's the side of the mountain, and that's all the little trails. Now, I know from hiking with scouts that they want to go straight up the hill. But when you're hiking and backpacking, you usually take the switchbacks. And so it goes back and forth, slowly, gradually going up to the top or, or down to the bottom, either way. And that's the, the sheep could hurt themselves if they tried to go straight up or straight down. So the shepherd leads them around and around the hill until they get to the top. To the green grass and uh, so that is what David is talking about here is these these uh, paths and, and all over the hills there around Israel is looks just like that all these little worn paths where and one one of the one of the videos I watched they said the paths are just wide enough that kind of uh, the sheep on each path can reach the grass in the middle on either side and they just continue to walk and go up the hill together and follow the shepherd. Uh, so when we follow us, you know, he leads us down the right path when we follow our shepherd, uh, you know, but <clears throat> these sheep have been going over these for years and years. They said these may date back to Abraham's time, some of these paths that are up there. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> if, we, if we look at our own lives like this too, uh, there are so many paths that crisscross our life, and you have to choose what is the right path. But if, if if we're looking down, we could get on the wrong path. But if we're following the shepherd and watching the shepherd, we, we stay on the right path, right? Uh, and, and we remember that verse: "All we like sheep have gone astray." You know, and I, and uh, <clears throat> the best shepherd story in the Bible is told by Jesus in Matthew eighteen, twelve, and thirteen. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more than that for that sheep, than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. And in Luke 15, 7, it says, I say unto you, the likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over 99 just persons, which need no repentance. So, you know, I can tell you I was that sheep. I've, I've probably gone astray many times, but God, the good shepherd, comes and gets me, he carries me back to the rest of the flock, and he does that for us each and every time. Now, the only other, one of the other places that they talk about this is where my, my Green Pasture sermon started. And then last night when I got done, I realized I didn't even have it in here. But uh, the other place he mentions Green Pastures, and we see this picture type of Jesus leading people to the Green Pasture is, uh, is in Mark chapter 6 when they go out to the desert place, which I showed you the desert place there. And then... Uh, the disciples said, it's late. We need to send everybody back home so they can get something to eat. It's Mark chapter 6, 30 through 37. And, and the disciples said, we don't have anything to eat. And then and Jesus said, go find what, we, what you can. And they find the five loaves and the two fish, right? And he says, set the people in the green grass. And it, so he divided them up and set them in the green grass while he broke the, the food and then started to distribute it. 
Uh, so that was kind of where this started was with that green grass that, that, that he led them to there. And that, but he's been the, that's his picture type there exactly of him being the shepherd leading the people to the green grass, providing the food and the water and the protection that they needed right there. Uh, <clears throat> Psalms 23 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's one of those verses that we just, we hold on to, right? And that rod and that staff are for our protection and our guidance. I, I heard a story, and I don't know that how, it's, it's one that was told to me a long time ago, that they use the rod, that when that sheep goes off and goes astray, that they, they, they sometimes have to break their leg and carry them. They'll carry the sheep. They'll use that rod to break their leg and then carry them until the heels the leg up. Uh, you know, to keep them from wandering off, uh, those that continue to wander. But those that rod is also used to, to, to fight off any predators and to protect them. And the staff is to guide them. And, the, and it's nice to know that our God has that for us too, for protection and guidance, right? Twenty uh, in Psalms 23, 5 and 6, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The promise of his provision, his guidance, and his protection are good all the days of our life. Isn't that great? Uh, we just need to listen to his voice and follow him closely, just like the sheep. Listen to their shepherd's voice and follow him closely. Uh, I'll close with saying something that St. Patrick said in his confessions. He never got over what God had done for him. He said, I was like a dumb stone lying squished in the mud. The mighty merciful God came, dug me out, and set me on top of the wall. Therefore, I praise him. Anything that happens to me, he wrote, whether pleasant or distasteful, I ought to accept with serenity, give thanks to God who never disappoints. I thought that was pretty poignant. Uh, you know, and just like Patrick, we're dumb stones squished in the mud. Sometimes that's what we feel like, right? And life leaves us feeling like that. But God cares enough to dig us out and set us apart. He washed away our sins with the blood of Christ on the cross. And if he is our shepherd, we need to depend on him every minute of every hour of every day. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this lesson. Amen. Albeit small and short, Lord, we pray that it, it, it touches our hearts and that we look to you for that guidance and protection. We thank you for sending your son to die on that cross and to, to shed this blood for our sins. Lord, we praise you for that. What it means that you continue to protect us and to lead us minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. We thank you for all of that. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your word that we heard tonight. Lord, pray that you help us, Lord, to apply it to our lives, Lord. Uh, Lord, help us, Lord, to uh, trust you more, Lord, uh, rely on you to guide us, Lord, and help us, Lord, not to uh, forget you, Lord, in our, our decisions that we have to make on a day-to-day -day basis, Lord. And uh, Lord, we pray for the, the right heart, Lord, for you, Lord, and we love you. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.